conservation, conservation, groundwater management, renewable energy, and alternative transportation. And uh, as we see the peninsula growing, I think this is going to become more and more important to us. Uh, we have what we are noticing is closing in on us called gridlock. I'm sure you've all experienced 92 or trying to get from Palo Alto to San Mateo in the afternoon or get from Sunnyvale to up to this area at five o'clock. Really tough. 101 at any time now. It just yeah, it's LA. Yeah. LA North. I have set you up. You're going to be a success. Please come up. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, you guys. Thank you for having me. Once again, my name is Kirsten Pringle. I work for San Mateo County's Office of Sustainability. A little bit about our office, because we're new, we were formed a little over a year ago as a pilot project of the county manager's office. We work on a number of different sustainability and environmental topics, and we work both in the unincorporated area and on countywide projects. And just this year, we became an official office of the county, so now we're here to stay. And today, I'm here to talk to you about one countywide project that we're working on called Community Choice Energy. And this is something that we're currently exploring. And starting in October, the city and county will make the decision whether to actually form this program. And this is why I'm here today. As leaders in your community and civic leaders, we would really like your guys' input and also just want to make sure you guys are educated about this program that we're exploring. So you might have heard community choice energy also called community choice aggregation. We don't call it this because this is a horrible name. No one knows what community choice aggregation is or what it's about. So now we use the term community choice energy because it's focused on energy and electricity. There are community choice energy programs throughout the United States. Here in California, it was formed in 2002 via Assembly Bill 117. I'm going to go through some of my slides quickly because I actually am more focused on what kind of questions you guys have. So some of these I'm just going to skip through. So what is community choice energy? Community choice energy allows a group of communities, a group of cities and a county or a single city, to aggregate or pool the electricity demand together of their constituents in order to purchase energy on their behalf. So let's break this down because I know that's a lot. So right now, a very simplistic way or way to look at the way we get our energy is PG&E is our sole energy provider. PG&E purchases our energy on our behalf. They deliver it over electricity lines and they maintain those lines. And then they deliver it to our house and they meter and bill us. A community choice energy program would take away that first aspect of it. So the Community Choice Energy Program, or CCE, would purchase energy on everyone's behalf, but PG&E would continue to deliver the energy to our house and maintain the grid. And then this is an infographic that kind of shows that process. So why would we want to have a different energy provider? Why would we want to make this change? Well, there are three main benefits of Community Choice Energy. I break them up kind of into the three C's which is clean energy, community power, um, clean energy, community power, and, well, economics. Um, so first, clean energy. So CCE programs in California have been really um, different than ones across the United States because they're really focused on driving renewable energy. So not only are these energy providers giving different energy than PG&E, but energy with a higher renewable energy content. It's also driving community power. So these CCE programs are run as nonprofits, and they're governed by a board made out of elected officials. So communities have more say and more power over the content of the electricity and how those funds for electricity are used. In addition, because these CCE programs are nonprofits, the surplus funds can be funneled back into communities to build local energy projects, 
to also do um, energy efficiency programs tailored to our communities, really specific programs that will help our community rather than ones tailored to all of Northern California. It also really, the thing we try to really drive is just choice, more choice in the energy market. That's the third C is right now we don't have a choice about who our energy provider is. We can only choose PG&E. This just gives us a different choice. You can have the CCE program or you can have PG&E. It also gives you choice in different electricity options. So right now we don't get to choose wet type or the renewable content of our electricity. This will give you multiple options. Say you wanted 35% renewable energy or maybe you wanted to go all the way up to 100% renewable energy for your house. That is a choice that you would receive. So kind of driving home the clean power aspect of this, um, the city of San Mateo was actually really forward thinking when they created their climate action plans. And there are only one of two cities in all of the county that actually looked ahead at this program happening in other communities in California and said, we think this would be good. And so this is actually taken from the City of San Mateo's Climate Action Plan. And it says, if implemented, this measure alone result in 23,720, and then that's a measurement that's um, CO2 equivalent, so that's just carbon dioxide reduction, which translate to an emission reduction of 2.6 relative to baseline level. This is huge. If you look at all of the other electricity measures and just general measures in the City of San Mateo's Climate Action Plan, this could have a huge chunk of carbon dioxide reduction. So how does the CCE program work? Well, CCE programs are usually formed as a joint powers authority, which means that any city or the county that are interested would go into a joint powers authority together via doing an ordinance through their city council. It is governed by a board of the local elected officials. PG&E continues to um, maintain the lines, deliver electricity to the house, and bill and meter the customer. Uh, the only change on the residents' bills, they still receive a bill from PG&E. The only change is there's gonna be a different electricity generation charge. This is not an additional charge, it's just a different charge than what they would be given for PG&E. There are additional charges that remain the same because PG&E still receives money to maintain our grid. And then the CCE becomes the default electricity provider. So this means that if the city of San Mateo decided to join the CCE program, that everyone would be automatically enrolled in the CCE with the option to opt out, meaning they can leave and go back to PG&E. You can do this anytime. You also can do it before the program starts. So before the CCE program starts, they are required to do a certain amount of notices to let everybody know that the program is forming so people can decide right then and there that they want to stay with PG&E. So I'm gonna quickly go through this. Um, the first CC in California was Urban Clean Energy. It was started in 2010. And what I really wanna highlight is this aspect of it, because I think it can be kind of hard to envision what a CCE program might look like. And I think the best way of doing that is look at current CCEs that are already accessible. So Marin Clean Energy currently includes all of Marin County, all the cities in it, but they've also expanded into unincorporated Napa County and the cities of Richmond, El Cerrito, San Pablo, and Benicia. So now they've actually expanded outside the Marin County borders. So as you can see, the default product for Marin Clean Energy is 50% renewable. Um, this is PG&E, this is actually a little outdated. PG&E, I believe this year is actually 28% renewable content. So all customers enroll in the program and the residential get this default 50% pro product at this generation fee charge per kilowatt hour. Um, or they can have the choice to opt up, pay a little more, and they get 100% renewable energy. Or just this year, Marine Clean Energy actually developed, well a couple years ago, developed a local solar project using surplus funds from their organization. And so customers can choose to have 100% renewable energy that's all local. And that's what this local solar product is. 
You might also notice that in the default product is actually cheaper as is the deep green than what PG&E is doing. So actually in marine clean energy, customers getting more renewable energy, but they're saving money. And this is very exciting. We try not to overemphasize this point because the energy market is at an all time low right now. So it's really easy to get low energy products, but we know this might not always be the same. So while we always want the CC program in San Mateo County to be price competitive, we can't always guarantee it's gonna be the lowest cost. You'll see here that no matter if you're a pg and &E customer, marine clean energy customer, you have the same delivery fee. So that's the fee for maintaining the grid and delivering all electricity. And you'll also see something here called a pg and &E fee. And this is only for marine clean energy customers. So this is a fee mandated by the California Public Utilities Commission. And the purpose of this fee is to relieve the um, burden of cost off of pg and &E customers for people leaving PG&E and going to the CCE program. So this is so PG&E customers who stay with PG&E all of a sudden don't have to pay a bunch of additional fees. But as you can see, even with the PG&E um, fee here, customers are still saving money with marine clean energy. And this is just a really quick look at the commercial cost comparison. So you can see that commercial customers have the same options as residential customers. They have the 50, 100%, and 100% local solar. They're also saving money, even actually more money than the residential customers. The delivery fee is the same. And then the pg and &E fee for just marine clean energy customers. So can I ask a question? Yes. So the electricity that's actually delivered at the plug, Yes. it's all the same, right? Yes. This is. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, so really what's going on is you're really voting with your dollars to support this particular kind of generation. Yes. Okay. So all electricity, um, no matter what you pay for, yeah, once elect electrons go into the grid, there's no way to track that. So people do like to have this image that they're getting a plug down the street, the solar project down the road, and that's just not how it works. But like you said, it's kind of voting with your dollar thing. You're paying to have this money put into the grid, which is supporting the renewable energy um, industry. Yes. A question. Will our, our county here be, have savings similar to Marin? Do you anticipate? That's what we're hoping. So right now, this is a few slides down, but right now we're con bucks. conducting what we're calling a technical feasibility study. And one of the main things in that technical study is to look at the current market prices for energy and look at what type of energy we could get, like the like how much wind can we get for this price versus solar, basically different energy portfolios at different prices. And the results of those study come out on September 1st. And I'll have a timeline and a couple slides while I'll show you some key dates if you're interested in seeing what those results are. But the main goal of that study is to show us whether or not we can get that energy at a cheaper price. Because we know that no one's gonna sign up for this project. Some people might, if they really care, but a lot of people won't sign up unless we can make this cost competitive, so. This is just for electricity. This is just for electricity, not natural gas. There is a similar program you can form for natural gas, but right now we're just looking at these. So the second um, community choice energy program in California was Sonoma Clean Power. It was started in 2014, and at the end of 2014, it expanded to the rest of its customers. So just really quickly, their default product is 33%. So as you can see, it's a little less than Marin's, with the option to go into 100% renewable energy. Their 100% renewable energy product is actually from a geothermal vent that's within Sonoma County, so it's actually also local. Unfortunately, we don't have geothermal vents, so we're not as lucky, but I think that's really cool. Once again, here's their electricity generation fee. So their default product is cheaper than PG&E's product. They have the same delivery fee no matter what your CCE or PG&E customer. And they also have these PG&E fees just for Sonoma Clean Power customers. And then stay with the commercial cost comparison, 33%, 100% still saving money. So these are some frequently asked questions that we get. So will my electricity service be altered? Will I be treated differently if I become a CCE customer? No, your electricity service won't be altered. Even if something happens to the CCE and it fails, all customers can right away go back to PG&E. The CCE actually 
actually puts up a um, bond in case anything happens so those customers can easily be transferred back to PG&E. We also get a lot of people worrying that they're going to be treated different. Say they're a CCA customer and they have a power line down in their neighborhood. PG&E legally can't treat CCA customers any differently. Um, one, because they're maintaining the line and you're still paying for the line to be maintained. And we've talked to staff from Sonoma Clean Power and Marin Clean Energy, and they said that the service for CCE or PGE customers is just as good. A question we get a lot is solar. What about the solar panels on my roof? So right now, actually, solar customers and Marin Clean Energy and Sonoma Clean Power are getting a better deal with their programs. These, the current CCEs have a really robust, what's called net energy metering program. Basically, it means that if you make more energy than you use, then you get money back. pg and also has this program, but they're reducing it. They just released um, in a news press that they're making it less of an incentive. And even before it wasn't very good, they were giving customers back money for wholesale rates. And current CCEs give it at market rates, which means customers are actually getting a lot more money back. And in pg and &E, I believe customers get credits towards the bill, and in current CCEs, they're actually getting checks. So it incentivizes a lot more residential solar. There's also some other programs to incentivize local renewable energy products, such as feed-in tariffs, which are for more larger local products that third-party companies are building but allows to have more local renewable energy in our area. And that's what we're really hoping the CCE will drive, is in the first couple years, we'll probably have to buy energy in the Central Valley because we don't have a lot of local energy products. But in the future, that's, that's our long-term goal, is to have more projects here in San Mateo County, build some local jobs, build some green jobs, and also just have that economic revenue from that. Um, what about programs for low-income individuals? So there's current programs such as the CARE program and other programs for senior and low-income families that pg e currently has. These programs all carry over into the CCE. There's no disruption in that. Will I still have access to pg es energy efficiency program? The answer is yes, you will. You will, whether you're a pg e customer or CCE customer, you can still do the energy efficiency rebates and other um, incentives that pg e offers. And why is CCE an opt-out program? Why do people have to opt out? A lot of people don't like that they, they're automatically opted into the program. That is because of how the bill AB117 was written. It's just the state mandate. So what are the risks for CCE? So of course there's risks to anything, and I couldn't come up here and tell you about this program without telling you some of the problems that maybe we foresee down the road. Thank you. So the main one is market fluctuation. I kind of already touched on this, is that we are really lucky right now that the CCE programs are getting really good renewable energy contracts because the renewable energy market is at an all-time low. However, we want to really be able to get energy prices this low. So in the future, our prices could raise, and we don't know when that would happen. In addition, PG&E in about 2018-2020, will be going back out for their old contracts. Their old contracts will be expiring and they'll be getting new contracts. And so their prices are probably lower at that time. So it's always the risk of trying to stay cost competitive with pg e because this is, in the end of the day, a business. And so you're always trying to be as cost competitive as possible. Customer opt-out is a big one. Um, at current CCA, or CCEs, customer opt-out rate is about 11 to 13% meaning in the CCEs, 11 to 13% of the population within their service area chooses to go back to PG&E. That's pretty normal, that's like a good rate, what we expect. However, if we get a much larger number, like perhaps 30 or 40 or even more people for opting out for any reason, that could really hurt our energy contracts and that's a big risk. We plan to mitigate this by doing a lot of community outreach, not just as we're launching the program, but before we launch the program, to make sure this is something that our communities actually want, and make sure people are well educated about it before, instead of all of a sudden one day their energy provider changes and they think, I don't know where this was coming from. Another big one is political risk, especially at the start of forming a CCA. This takes a lot of political capital to get this done. As you can imagine, 
not just the county, but getting all 20 cities to agree on a brand new JPA is a lot of work, and it takes a lot of late work to do this. And finally, regulatory and legislative risk is always something we deal with. Since CTEs first started coming on the line in 2010, there have been numerous bills and pieces of legislation going through all the time that could really hurt the formation of new CCEs or current CCEs. So we work a lot with consultants and our legislative people at the state to just try to keep our ear to the ground and address problems as they arise. So CCE in San Mateo County, where are we right now? Well, the CC efforts are being led by the county and we're currently conducting a technical study, as I said, that all 20 cities, including the county, are doing together, so that's great. The results of that study will be published on September 1st. We have monthly advisory committee meetings and these meetings are made up of representatives from the 20 cities, but also representatives for 15 different organizations representing environmental, labor, social justice, a whole variety of different interests. And so they form the board but all meetings are open to the public, and I can give you more information if you want. They're on the first Thursday or the fourth Thursday every month at 7 9 p.m. in Belmont. Uh, but if you're interested in this, the September meeting on September 24th will be especially important because that's where we're going to be going over the results of the technical study. We have tons of community engagement, and then in October, we're going to be returning to the Board of Supervisors first as a study session to go over this. And then October 20th, we're going to be going to the Board of Supervisors to ask if they want to be the first municipality in San Mateo County to start forming this JPA. So here's our project timeline. We are about, we're here right now, so we're waiting for the results of the technical study. As, and we'll also have some community meetings in October. So if you'd rather go to the community meetings and the advisory committee meetings, the advisory committee will be a little more detailed. The committee needs a little more of a broad overview. If the cities decided to join the JPA, then we hope to start rolling out service in fall of next year. So potentially by this time next year, there'll be a new community choice energy program in Mateo County, and you guys could be getting more renewable energy. So the reason I'm here today, like I said, is one, because you guys are leaders in your community, I would really ask you to tell people about this. Because even people that are not interested in renewable energy, don't really think about their electricity or where it comes from, this will affect them if this happens, because everyone will be enrolled in the program. And so this is something I really encourage people to talk about. Um, if you're interested in it, I really advise you to, we have a email list that I can pass around if you'd like more information. We have our monthly advisory committee meetings that you can come as a member of the public and give their advice. Or you can email me at any time. I, I answer a lot of public emails about this. I love talking about CCE. Um, and also contact your local elected officials. The way that the city of San Mateo County is going to join the JPA is by passing an ordinance. And to do that, they, the city council needs to know that people are interested in this or not interested in this. Either way, I want people to come to their meetings when they have them and know that people at least know about this and they're thinking about this. So I really appreciate your guys' time. I know this is a little technical, but I think this is something that's really important for our community. It's a great way to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions, to have more local control over our energy, and just to have more choice in the energy market. And it's something I personally really behind as well, just beyond my job. So this is one of the main projects I work on, so you can contact me anytime with questions, and here's my contact information. Thank you. Yes. Uh, tell us about yourself. How come you're such a good public speaker? And Thank you. Know, I actually thought job. I was a little fast today. I want to get no, through it's okay. You did you are you a public speaker by profession or uh, no, I've just done this episode. It's a little easier every time. Very Thank you, though. Good. I, yeah. I, I what was your major in college, for example? Environmental studies. Environmental, okay. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Yes. Okay. I'm <clears throat> I'm trying to understand what the economic benefit to San Mateo or any county for that matter. In, in getting into this other than the oh, there's zero. There's no direct economic benefit to actually the county and the cities. Um, the, the cities actually don't pay into it, and then if something happens to the CCE, they actually don't get any 
I guess the other way it goes, if something happens in the CC, they don't lose any money. Yeah. It's really savings for the potential savings for their customers. So the one benefit they could get is if the CCA is getting cheaper energy, their municipal accounts can save energy from Sam, the energy rates. San Joaquin has got a, if you go towards Yosemite on 120, they've got a big sign about buying energy from the San Joaquin Valley, Valley essentially, yeah, Valley. Yeah. And I am assuming that what's going on is that there's out in San Joaquin County where are these huge solar uh, energy generation plants that a lot of the farmers are probably selling energy to them. Yeah. And is that what's going on? And so they're becoming a conduit? I think so. So think about the landscape has changed a lot since 2010. Before there, the three big main electricity in California was PG&E, um, so SoCal Edison, and San Diego Gas and Electric. There's three. And so those people, they were already they were already tapped out on renewable energy. That's it. So we have all these projects and no one's buying them. There's no market demand. All of a sudden, these CCEs come on board and all of a sudden the market demand spikes. And to give you an idea of how prevalent this is becoming, every county in the Bay Area right now is looking at this. So Marin and Sonoma already have one. Alameda County is about to publish their request for proposals to start a technical study. Um, Santa Clara is also looking at this. They're about to do a technical study. And the counties of Monterey, San Benito, and Santa Cruz together are currently doing a technical study. So this is everybody. And these probably, I imagine these solar developers in the Central Valley are seeing this and being like, oh, we really want to get into this market now. It's one. Yeah. It's going through. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. You said earlier that this gives an opportunity for people to have choices. Yes. However, you also said that um, the cities and counties, you're hoping that they will be passing an ordinance. If so, yes. then it won't be, op you know, people will be opting in, opting in, or they would, wouldn't have any choices. It's mandatory then at that point, right? Well, they have the choice to go back to PG&E, either before the program starts or any time during the program. And then they can go from pg e back to the CCE. So that's where we see the choice, this choice between different energy providers. I think any time, too, that, um, that you have something that the city is deciding, you can at least have more of a public input in saying that you don't want this, that you want to stay with pg e And I see that as a good thing. Because currently, we don't have a choice. No one chooses to be in pg e You just are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you. Right, if you guys can, you know, maybe, Kirsten, can you stay a few minutes after? Yeah, yeah, I have, um, if you guys want more information, I have pamphlets about our program, and I also have FAQ sheets that are a little more technical, but have more information and stuff. Okay, awesome. Yeah. All right, two more items on the agenda, and we have two minutes left. So, uh, <laughs> I'll be really on schedule. <laughs> Count the minutes here. Um, one is our next speaker will be Maureen.